Harry managed me in a charity game. You won't remember, my performance wasn't that memorable, Harry, but um, you were manager of England against Wales for John Hartson at Pride Park. Yes. And um, yes. you came up to me in the dressing room beforehand. You said, Dan, what sort of standard do you play to? I said, Harry, I've played, listen, I've played a few games at county level, but I'm bang average. And you said, can you, can you do a job at right back? I said, I'll play anywhere you want me to, boss. And you yeah. started the game with Idris Elba at right back. And you said, Dan, as soon as Idris starts giving me grief, you can come on. And after five minutes, you pulled him off. And I think your quote was, I said, Dan, get on it. Idris is playing like a massive spider. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, Dan, I'll be honest, in the dressing room before the game, I've gone up to, uh, to, to was it Ian Wright played, didn't he? Yeah, righty play. And I've yeah. got up to righty and I've got, Ian, who's the big guy? He went, you don't know who he is, Harry. I went, no. He says, Idris Elba. I went, yeah. He went, he's in, he's in Lufa or whatever it was at the time, you know. I went, I haven't seen it. I didn't know, you know. I mean, what a star he's big. he is. I mean, massive, isn't he? He'd just been in the, he was in the, he'd been in the wire. And then, this is how well you played it, Harry, because then you came up to me before the game and you said Dan listen I'm going to I'm going to start you on the bench because I love the wire and it just is in that <laughs> that sounds about right <laughs> yeah yeah I'd had to, you had to have a book of them Dan when you left them out on a Saturday you had to have some excuse why oh, you were exactly. you know good you know I, look I'm saving you for next week <laughs> <laughs> We've got a big game. It was next lovely. Week. I felt I, I feel like a proper player for once. <laughs> How did it start out for you, for boy from Crawley Town, or, or wherever, ending up presenting on BBC One? Well, I was um, as a kid, I was totally obsessed with sport, um, football, golf, sort of cricket. Just watching it, really. Um, I used to dream of hitting the putt to win the Open, or scoring a six at Lords, or scoring the goal to win, win the FA Cup final, and. Um, my dad was a big Spurs fan and he took me, the first game he ever took me to see was Spurs against Stoke at White Hart Lane years ago. And he just, I remember, I can remember it quite vividly, sat me down in the stand and said, right, watch this bloke. And it was Glenn Hoddle. And Hoddle was unbelievable that day. And from that point on, I, you know, I, I had a Spurs shirt for that summer, Hoddle on the black, uh, on the back. I asked my parents to change my name to Glenn. They, they turned it down. Um, but I, I, it was, you know, I was, I had dreams of being a footballer, but didn't have the talent to back it up. So I actually wrote a letter to Des Lynham uh, when I was 11 and said, Go Dear on. Des, I love your moustache. You're the best. How do I get your job? And um, he wrote back, would you believe, Fantastic. Harry, and said, uh, Listen, do your GCSEs, do your A levels. Uh, go and do a degree. Don't do a media degree. Do something like history or English, and then do a do a postgraduate course in broadcast journalism, and then get a job in local radio. And that bizarrely, that's exactly the route that I took. And um, I was going to be a teacher, but that didn't work out. Um, and then, uh, in fact, that didn't work out, Harry, because I went. I was playing for the University of Sheffield on the day that I went for my interview. We had a big cup final, and I had the full kit on underneath the suit that I wore for my. Um, teaching uh, sort of examination and because um, I was ready to play straight away afterwards and I had these red socks at the bottom and uh, the one of the assessors said why are you wearing red socks to the most important interview of your life and I said well reason why I'm wearing red socks is I've got my football kit on underneath I'm playing later and she said you're not teaching material you're the sort of teacher who you know wouldn't take things seriously would try and be the kid's friend but wouldn't teach them anything and i i thought oh the minute that's a bit out of order so i stood up and i dropped my trousers and said i'm only i'm here because you know i i've proudly representing this university i'd love to be a teacher but i'm also keen on football and that's i'm trying to do two things on the same day and she said put two big ticks uh, crosses on the box oh, and that was it that was in my teaching that was career. a result so i got a job in local radio and the rest is history Going back, going back to Hoddle then, what a player he was. Glenn Hoddle, oh, Glenn was amazing. And what a great guy he is as well, Glenn, and his class. I even love Glenn Hoddle, despite the fact that he inflicted the most humiliating day I've ever had on a golf course. This was during the World Cup in Brazil. Um, we had an ITV against BBC game, and it was me and Alan Hansen against uh, Hoddle and Dixon. And you, oh, they're good all goal, good golfers, golfers, so we're all playing to a good standard. And Hanson and I were four up with five to play, right? No. And we lost My to Hoddle God. and Dixon. And the last five holes, 
Hansen did absolutely nothing, and he still blames me for it. And um, I, 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 I even birdied. I lost out. I birdied one of the last five holes. Still lost out because Dixon had a shot with a birdie, so he, he beats on that one. And we lost on the final hole. And he, even to this day, that must have been what's that? Nearly ten years ago. Whenever I see Lee Dixon, like across a room, he just waves at me and he holds up four fingers and yeah. then he holds up five. Mind fingers. you, I saw him last night on the TV. I don't know if you saw him with a flat cap on, the long hair. I thought, I did. Who oh, is that? I can't. It was Lee Dixon. Real. Oh, it really changed his image there last night. It was. I think he's great. I used to work with him a lot, Lee. I mean, like you, I've had the privilege of working with so many great pundits over the years, and I still consider it a real honour to work with some of these guys. You know, the guys I grew up watching and loving their work, and you know, I was a kid watching Lineker in the '86 World Cup and 1990, and uh, you know, I still remember my fondest ever tournament would have been watching the Euros in 1996. And I still, this is going to make me sound like a right idiot now, but I still remember the first time Alan Shearer called me by my first name. Like the, the little school kid, he'd be like, Alan Shearer knows my name. Brilliant. This is weird. Yeah, I mean, that was a good team. <laughs> good players, weren't they? Um, Shearer, what a centre forward oh, he was. Brilliant. Uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. I, I also love the fact about that. I love, Shearer would always tell you that, Harry, wouldn't he? That Terry Venables, just before that tournament, he said, um, Shear had been on a quite a barren run, hadn't he? And he said to him, you're going to be my captain. You will be my first choice striker. And then Shear just said overnight, his confidence just went through the roof. And it's, it's a ma- you must have had that so many times as well, when as a manager, you just find the right words to say to the right well, player at the right people, time. We all respond to that, Dan, don't we? When you do a programme and, you know, the producer, whoever comes, hey, Dan, great show today. You were brilliant. It really went well. We love it. I don't care who you are. We all have a pat on the back, don't we? And I think I think football, like everybody, we all respond to that much more than we do. Someone keep telling you what you can't do, and you know, uh, and and footballers especially. I mean, I used that was really how I managed. You know, I'd, I I went to Tottenham. Gareth, Gareth Bale had been on a 20, 26, 20, I don't know, twenty eight game. Never been on a winning team, which was incredible. He'd never ever been on a winning team at Tottenham. If he came on a sub, they didn't win. Alex Ferguson said to me, I wouldn't play him. How can you pick him? I'd only just gone to Tottenham, you know. I said, well, he said, I'm superstitious. He said, I wouldn't play him. Anyway, but Gareth, that's all I did with Gareth. I used, you know, hey, give the ball to Gareth. I said, Gareth, can you imagine their right back? He's been on the toilet in that dress, sitting in the toilet <laughs> for the last 40 minutes. Can he you keep give, hey, keep giving it to Gareth? Gareth, run and ragged. You're absolutely destroyed these today, you know. And he loved it. And you could see it, you know, and we're all the same. Luca Modric, Luca, you're the best player. Keep getting the ball, make us play, run the game. Oh, fantastic. We feel and I think people respond to that, don't Even they? the best players. Oh, the top players. Listen, Bobby Moore, quick story. I went to America with me and Bobby, and we were great mates. He was I loved him more than you know, I couldn't tell you. Um, and we went out one night for dinner with our wives and, and t- chatting to Bob. He said, you know, Harry, he said, all the time I played at West Ham and I played with him there, I was there with him. He said, Ron Nevers, Ron Greenwood was the best coach I've ever met in my life. I still haven't seen anybody could come close to him. The man was a genius. The things that he, he did that are still being, you know, were carried on overlapping fullbacks. We were the first club to do it. Fullbacks stood on the halfway line. Ron Greenwood brought in overlapping fullbacks near post runs. But Bobby said he never, ever said to him, well done. He said he never, ever came up to me and said, hey, well done, Bobby, or well played, Bobby. He said, um, do you know, we, I think we all need that. He said, I, 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 you know, I don't know whether, because I was a captain of England, he thought I didn't need a, to have a pat on the back. He said, but we all need a pat on the back. I would love to, if he'd have come. And I took that, you know, I thought, you're so right. We all love it. I don't care. You win a game and you go upstairs after in the ballroom, the chairman says, hey, Harry, great performance today. You were what brilliant. Loved the way the team played. I think we all respond to that, don't we? This free trade investment app is terrific. If you've ever thought about investing, this is a great way to start and to grow some wealth over the long term. It's so simple, anybody can use it. Come here, I'll show you. You can buy and sell stocks plus ETFs. With none of your high commission fees you might get elsewhere. It's commission-free, and there's no hidden cost. Brilliant for beginners and experts, the Free Trade app is trusted by over 700,000 investors. Even better, if you register and fund your account via freetrade.io slash harry, you get a free share worth between three and 200 pounds. 
Oh yeah, and don't forget that when investing, your capital is always at risk, meaning your investment can go up, but they can also go down. Other charges may apply. When you mentioned Luka Modric there, I've always wanted to ask you this. When, Because um, every, every Spurs player I've ever spoken to who played in that side with Modric, they said when he first came in, um, and in the first couple of, I can't remember how long it lasted, but nobody passed to Luka Modric because he used to stand so close to the opposition midfielders. You think, why is he standing there? And then when they eventually realised just how good he was, they could get the ball yeah. in any situation yeah. and he never gave it away. Yeah, what That's he did, when, Dan, when I went, for him. Uh, he played in a position sort of off the left. You know, he'd play, if you're playing 4 4 2, he played in a left position and come into a little pocket and. You know, and then suddenly we were playing um, Arsenal at home on a Tuesday night. And I remember saying to Clive Allen, and Clive was a good coach, knew the game inside out, obviously. But I said, I'm going to play Luka Modric central. And Clive said to me, Harry, he, he'll get murdered in there. He's not strong enough to play in there. He can only play in that off the left, you know, uh, out the way where he can... I said, no, I think he, uh, he'll play in there. He, he'll get on the... Uh, you know, anyway, I played him. We beat Arsenal. I mean, then Saturday we played Chelsea and he said, you're not going to play in there Saturday, though, are you? <laughs> I went, yeah. He said, there's Essien, Balak, Lampard, all monsters, you know. Now I'm going to play Luca in there. We beat Chelsea on the Saturday and he never played anywhere else. And, and, and only, listen, listen, I made a million wrong decisions, but I pushed Gareth Bell from left back. I think he'd have been the best left back in the world, Gareth Bell, if he'd have stayed there, but I pushed him from left back to left wing. Mm. Uh, and he and and push Luca inside one, and the switch worked for both of them really. Yeah. But wherever Gareth would have played, as I say, he'd have been uh, he'd have been the best around. He was fantastic at Tottenham. In terms of the players you meet, then Dan, in terms of you know Harry saying you're working with certain players, who do you like working with? Who do, how do people respond? Or I, I always love um, I love people one who can tell a good story, but two who who can sort of take us inside the dressing room because that's what. I think sometimes, you know, Harry's really good at this. He, he sort of makes it, he makes the sport that we all love available to anybody who has played it or just literally turned on the telly and seen football for the first time. And I think that's so important to sort of throw open the doors of football and to allow you into, I always say to players, you know, I, I'll, get us into, I'll get us in on time, I'll get us out on time. I can ask you a few questions, but you've got to bring the gold and I'll try my best to bring that out of you. So, you know, take me inside the dressing room. Tell me what it's like when you get dropped on the day of a game. You know, Dion Dublin told this brilliant story recently um, when we were talking about selection for a major tournament where Dion Dublin was the player who went into the hotel in 1998 just after Gazza had been told by Glenn Hoddle that he wasn't going to the World Cup. So Dublin was the next player in. You know, fans love that sort of thing, that sort of insight and sort of peeling back the curtain and peeling back the layers. And I think... The best pundits I've worked with are able to do that, but also able to analyse a game. To go back to Lee Dixon, I remember watching a game, just as two friends, we were watching a game at um, Manchester City. And I love, as a, as somebody who enjoys football and you know has a relatively decent knowledge, but nothing like I would need to, you know, to uh, be a pundit or anything, but to have a decent knowledge of what's happening and then to see somebody who sees another level beyond and further watching a game and analysing and telling me which players to, to look out for and sort of tactics to admire. I, I love that. That's, that's what I, I think as a, as a viewer, that's what you love to see. Take, tell me something that I can take away and either use as my own or uh, talk to my mates about it when I next see them or, you know, tell them, did you see what Harry Redknapp said last night? Or did you see that? a bit of analysis that so-and-so did. I love it. I love all that. And, you know, I'll be honest, there, there are players who have been great players and good, and I'll be truthful, I listen to them sometimes and I think, I don't think you've got, you know, I don't you've got a clue, <laughs> you know, what you're talking about, really. They've just been, in, not all, listen, a lot of great little great players do, they are great pundits. And Dan, thanks ever so much for doing this, Dan. I really appreciate it, It's mate. been a real pleasure. I love, I've always loved talking to you. I love watching you on the telly. I love listening to you on the radio. I love all the programmes you're doing. My kids still think you are the number one ever to be in the jungle. <laughs> um, when, uh, when I told them I was doing this, this programme with you, they're like, what? The, the Harry from the jungle. <laughs> from the jungle, yes. yeah. You know, you, know, he's, you know he's a football manager as well. Yeah, we don't no, care about that. We just love care. him in the jungle. In the jungle. <laughs> all right, Dan. Brilliant. Thank Looking forward you. to seeing you, Dan, on the golf course. <laughs>